I'm going to do is get this mixture right and you can see that I have a, a, that quantity of ultramarine and that quantity of red and I'm going to make um, a puddle here, a puddle with maybe four parts water like that and into that I'm going to mix the red and you can see I'm using a separate little brush. I'm not using the brushes I'm going to paint with, I'm mixing with a separate brush that's the consistency I've got so far with the red. See that? It's, it's um, a medium uh, tone. And look, I have a practice paper here and I can try out. That looks okay there. Now, I'm going to add, I added quite a big lump there, but this one I'm going to add less to control it. And to see as I add it, it is slightly going into this kind of colour here, which I like. See that colour there? That's a possible colour we're going to use to start with. See that colour there? That is going to be the sky and into that I might drop some of that at the moment but that is the puddle I'm starting with. So that is the colour I'm going to work with now there and 
what I'm going to do now, there's the colour there on the page. See there, that looks, that looks okay to me. And I'm just going to do a thumbnail sketch. There is a little bit of sky that I'm doing there. And I'll just drop that colour into it. And you see it's a gradual wash. That is what we are going to do in the big paint. Do you see that? A lot of you remember that I do this. I get a piece of masking tape to preserve the white area of the, where the water is going to be. And I'm going to take that tip. There it is. Oh dear. See that tip there now? I'm going to dull that. Take the stickiness of it. They know I do this. Look. There. There, I'm, I'm dulling the tip like this so it's not too sticky. Because if it's too sticky, when you come to lift it, you will lift the paint. You lift the paper off. So that's probably right there, look. Okay? Did you all see that? And the next bit I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a wet and wet sky. <coughs> oh, sorry. With a gradual wash. So I'm going to wet the paper here. Now, should I leave little white bits out? I'm going right over the land, by the way. Completely over the land. And I'm using the silk brush. And should I accidentally leave dry bits, that might look interesting. And then I'm going to go into this mixture, which is already separating. And you can see I'm using a silk brush, and it soaks up the paint very well. And I'll tilt this a little bit like this, and I'll drop this on. Right over the land. Yeah, I like that. I might do a wee bit more. Remember, you don't want to footer. So, what I've got there now is an interesting, subtle sky, and you can see the paint has been floated onto the paper. And there's little dry bits, which are nice. Now, I might just t touch a little bit of that blue. There's the blue. And have a little darker area, like that. And I'm going to drop that in in the top of the sky here, little bits of this, just for a bit of interest. There, I might stop there. So you have to you have to stop yourself from futtering. So I'll, I'll stop there. And as you can see, there's an excessive dribble there, which is. I'm going to dry, using a different brush, I'm going to dry that brush and I'm going to lift some of this off. There. And I think that's okay there, I'll just move that down there, that's land anyway. So I'll stop there. Now we're going to um, skip now and do this bit. Sometimes there's a temptation to start working on that mountain but that is so wet I can't go near that so I'll do the sand. And I'm going to do the sand, primary that colour, with the darker blue reversing um, at the bottom, the, the blue into the mixture. And I'll just demonstrate this now. And again, I'm going to wet the sand here. So, excuse me. i wet that paper there, up to that little edge. Again, if you leave little dry bits, it'll be interesting, so don't concern yourself with them. There's some dry areas in that. And I'm going to go into this mixture again, and I'm going to drop it in, right up to that water's edge. And sometimes the edges of the page can be nice if they're not finished. Those, those are deliberate, you could say. Again, I'm going to go into some of that blue, just to have some darkness mixed into that. And I'll incorporate it here at the very bottom. This is ultramarine blue. And I'm getting lovely colours here, if you notice. They're not true purples. They're slightly muddied. Right go a bit more. Remember you don't want to fitter and sometimes when you see me going back and forward I am fittering. I'm going to take the hair dryer and dry this briefly. I got a wee drop there which I'm not happy with but I won't go in and fitter it, I'll just leave it. 
Every time when you're painting, think of the economy of strokes and not overdoing it because that's what keeps the picture lively and it isn't a colouring in exercise. I'm now going to use the hair dryer. And before I do much more, I'm going to take that tape off in case it gets too sticky. And you see when I take it off, I've got a lovely line and the, paper, the, the tape didn't stick but it preserves the age of the horizon so it gives you that straight horizon from the sea. Um, what I'm going to do here now is we're going to try out some dry brush technique. Now we're, the colour's gone a bit less so this time though I'm going to add more blue to this. So it's predominantly blue here with a touch of red just so the last the sky and the sand was mostly the red dulled with the blue but this time I want a bit of the blue coming through so for that colour possibly would be the thing and I'm going to do this thing where it's dry brush work <coughs> excuse me here you know this dry brush work where you catch the tooth of the paper this is me catching the tooth of the paper to create C so there's the wee sample one I did, and if you imagine there's waves that are leaving so much white, that's what you're going to try and capture, is that whiteness. And remember in watercolour it's all about preserving that white, it's painting negatively, and so instead of painting the waves, you're actually going to leave out the whites of them. So there is some, let's just give you an example of it. And I've tried it out first. Now I'm working at a funny angle here, so it's a bit tricky. But if you notice what I'm doing, I've loaded up the brush, I'm using the belly of the brush, and I'm trying to catch the tooth of the paper. And I'm trying to do it in good horizontal uh, sweeps. So I think I'll work over the top of the work, like this. This here might be better here, see. See there now, I can anticipate where I'm going and do a broad stroke, like that. And that's what you're going to try and capture and catch that tooth of the paper. So if you notice my brush is really, like there's I've tried it out there, it starts off quite wet. And I'm using a synthetic brush which is resistant. If I chose to use this silk brush which is good for doing the sky, it wouldn't work as well because it carries so much. I'd have to be in great control of that fella. So I'll do it now on this one here. Try to get this used up some of that colour, so I'll mix some more. That's my great term. I'm now I'm going to put the tip, the tip that I didn't throw away, I'm going to put it just there. So this time I'm preserving the sky from being accidentally painted when I'm doing the sea. Okay? And I'm going to try and do this broad stroke. So, so my hand is moving. And I'm standing up to do this, so I will, there now, there's some broad strokes. And I'm going to curve them around here a little bit. There, I think that's, leave loads of white, don't paint at all. Okay, I come around here. Okay. Now some places along here, and I've gone round here, I might deliberately have darker areas of waves, but I, I'm trying to just make this look like it's a technique rather than being contriving. What if I put a bit more blue over there? There now. I'll take the tape off now, and you'll see that the sky has been preserved. See? And at the moment now, we have the sky which is that wet and wet technique, echoed in the sand, which is wet and wet, but now you have the dry brush, which is a nice juxtaposition. Now we're going to start working on the headland, and we're going to have a tone on this headland, and then we're going to have a darker tone in this headland, and we're going to make these gradual washes as if there's a mist coming in which is obscuring it a little bit and I'm going to demonstrate it first so that you would try this maybe beforehand and the colours I'm going to use for this here is a darker version now so I'm going to go and get that colour like that that dark blue and this and mix the two together to get that very slate grey dark colour there, I think that there is the colour there. 
It's the same palette, but this time there's less water in the brush and some more concentrated colour. Okay? And what I'm going to do here now is I'm just going to damp this mountain here. Just damp right down. I'm not just doing one mountain, I'm just damping that area there first of all, like that. And then taking this colour here, and when you come to paint the Muslin Temple here, if you just do a perpendicular line like that and colour that bit, you know, roughly in. If you notice I've left bits out and then paint this bit here very quickly and as you paint it, sweep it down to that damp area you have. Now I'm working above the work. I'm working upside down, should I say. So, could I add a bit more water to that now? I'm going to add some water to this. And make this even darker. Look. See how it runs? Sorry. And look what I'm going to do here now. We dry the brush a bit. We dry that brush and just control that so that it's not too dark. As I add more colour, it gets darker at the top edge. And we'll pretend that there's a mist coming in from the sea that is obscuring the view a bit. So that's coming down like that. So I'm going to try that now on the real one. Would I dry this first? I'll dry that just as a, as a trial. Be a bit dry there, and I'm going to do the second mountain, and I'm going to do it for real on the real picture in a moment. And look, I'm just drying that off a little bit, and I'm going to do this mountain now. Now it's still a bit damp, but I like the fuzzy edge. See, I dried that a bit. This is much darker. This was running a bit too much. This is why it's good to try it out because really it's there, I'm dampening this bit here now. Now I'm going to try and do that on the real picture now. It's just a bit too wet there, I should let that dry. But look, see that's the advantage of trying it out first. Trying that out first, okay? I'll do it in the real one now. So that is the trial one I did and it has, go it has gone its happy way, you know it's done an interesting thing but it looks like there's a mist in that valley and there's a mist coming from the sea in that valley. These are little miniature gradual washes and it's good to try it out. All this is not a waste of time, it helps you to understand what you're trying to do and then when you come to do it for real you're better informed. So this time I've got the colour mixed quite dark, I'm going to um, dump I'll just damp it, I'll damp it now, I'll damp it right down like I did before. That's so that when I paint the top bit, it's somewhere to run. And I'm now going to paint this bit here. And as soon as I paint it, do you see it starts to want to run its happy way? Don't make the mountain too smooth because nothing is perfectly smooth. And when I'm coming to do Muslim Temple, paint a perpendicular line like that and then finish it off with a little dome thing. And it doesn't have to be filmed in. There. It's very fittery this. Then moving along again, I'm not making perfect lines. And you could just sweep it down. Clean the brush. <clears throat> and sometimes when I clean the brush, I automatically dry it because that's excessively too wet. And this way I can control it, and then I can sweep it on down, like this, there. And I might add more colour here, more of that darker colour, which is the blue and the red. Less water, and so when I, when I want it to be really strong, look what I've done. I touch that to really increase the darkness of it. 
And because I damped it, it runs, it, it catches that damp area and it just runs itself. Now, I'll just dry it quickly and then I'll do the second mountain. But though I like that kind of run, so maybe. more of this intense colour like this. Less water, more paint. And it's given me like a dark bangle blue slate. I've been footering with that and I shouldn't footer. No way should ever footer. Now we do the second mountain here. And because it's near you, this could be paler, but I'm going to make them both quite the same. This is a bit of a headland here. See the pencil line? It's just a guideline. You have artistic license to change that a bit. Now if you have a problem getting that straight edge there, there's a sort of straight edge there, you could use the tape, but you don't want it perfect. So I'm going to just do that there and sweep it down. Add water to the brush now just to, you know, to sweep the colour down. Okay. I'm just tweaking this a wee bit as it dries because it's still wet and I can increase the darkness of this one. There's the colour there. You don't want the blue coming through, you want that banger blue slit so it's quite dark. I'm going to make it quite dark down there as if there's rocks or something. And I'm, I'm just dropping it in and letting it find its own way. But I think I might stop there. I'm going to use now, uh, try to put in some maybe nuances of rocks and stuff and so I'm just putting these things in now. The paper is not quite dry but I'm trying to make it look like it is a cliff or something there. So I'm putting in like veins going down like that. They look like veins possibly because it makes it look more interesting. This has got a, a town and houses here. I don't want to put them in really. Now in the distance here, you do see some hills. And I'm going to show you that now. And to do that, I have to water this colour down. This colour that I have over here. I'm going to water that right down. And do something quite pale. So I'm going to start over here. Like this. And it's that colour there to start with. Again, if you want to put the tape down to, to preserve that line. And as I go along, look, I've only done that much. And then I dry the brush and I drag that along. And really what I'm trying to capture is to give the perspective that as it goes away, it's going away from you and it's far, far away. And I think I could go a little bit darker because that is just very pale. So it's darker here. And then it's going to get paler. There, I think I'll stop there. Just blend that a wee bit there. So it's darker there, going lighter to create that illusion that that's up block foil and it's further away. bollards so there's these things that to stop the cars I think going into the sea and uh, I'm, I'm just going to paint little posts and when I just do one stroke like that with a brush and some of them I will have them going at jaunty angles don't make them perfect not sure and there's there's some is actually in the sea there's some there in the sea. Now I want to put some reflections under these fellas. And I'm going to put some um, shadows in the sand. And that's the next stage I'm going to do. We're using that dark colour that we had 
but this time I'm going to have it watered down to make a quantity of shadow. So I'm mixing the blue with the red and this is quite a dark mixture but it's looser than what was up there. Okay, and this one we do now here, I'm going to drizzle like that. This is the reflection here, just, just drizzle these wee fellas. This is going to give some detail in the foreground here. It's like a, a wiggly worm that fades. You, you lift your hand as you go down and you lift your hand like that. There. And then I'm going to use my bigger mop, this one. Have it nice and loose and wet. And I'm going to do some strokes on the beach like this. Just loose, loose as you can be. There I think that's maybe enough. The whole trick about watercolour is knowing when to stop. So I think that'll be enough there, just some loose strokes. And we're almost finished. A little bit darker down there too, the shore. That could be the sand getting a bit darker there. If I just streak through that a wee bit. Yeah, I think that finishes that off a bit. And then what? Flatter. I'm going to use primary that colour there, that dark colour there. Would I get some more of it mixed up? Yeah, that's probably enough there. And I'm going to just mask, turn a page upside down <clears throat> and preserve that area there like that. And I'm going to use a toothbrush like this. We better add it. too much. I am fluttering here folks. And I'm going to splatter. I'm going to try that first. That's okay there. You notice I hold it on my left hand and I flick with my right finger here. Touch. I'm just going to use my finger and pull down some of them as if they're little wee bits of reflection on them. Just some of the wee wet mucky bits might look like. Yeah, I think. And we're, we're finished now. Well, that's the picture completed, and I hope this is a task you'll be able to enjoy and participate in. Um, it's just a simple two colours, um, but in it there's so many different techniques, the wet and wet, the dry brushwork, splattering, and I hope you've enjoyed all I'm able to do it, and that it won't be so long before I see you all again. All the best. Bye.